Hi, in one of my previous videos I discussed the infiltration of the Dutch political system by Sigrid Alkak, a woman who is married to a former PLO member who used to work with Yasser Arafat. As a result of this infiltration, Dutch tax money has been used to finance the Muslim Brotherhood in the Netherlands and even to murder a Jewish teenager in Israel. But as bad as this infiltration is, it is also indicative of a deeper problem problem, which might actually be even more ominous than this infiltration in itself. Infiltration is bad, but how is this infiltration possible? You would think that in a well developed western country, there are many mechanisms that make sure that such an infiltration can never take place. These aren't just legal mechanisms, but also moral mechanisms, such as important institutes that guard morality, knowledge institutes with people who know what is going on and who will speak out against this type of infiltration immediately when it happens. Let's see what type of things this woman says at some event of her own political party. Ik was in Syrië voor het conflict en tijdens conflict. Het is een trots volk met een oude beschaving, een rijke traditie, een hoge manier van opleiding en ambitie. Onze waarden zijn namelijk niet typisch Nederlands. Ze zijn universeel. Waar het om gaat is dat wij gezamenlijk die universele waarden omarmen. We zijn in Nederland terecht trots op die waarden, maar echt niet omdat we ze hebben uitgevonden. Want wij D66'ers staan daar sterk in. Wij staan sterk juist in de Nederlandse traditie van mensenrechten, openheid en het streven naar rechtvaardigheid voor een ieder. So the Syrians are a proud nation that must be respected, but the Dutch must embrace diversity because our values are universal values. It is easy to see the double standard and her alignment with the interest of the Syrians in this case. So apparently this political party D66 thinks that it is a good idea to make this PLO infiltrator the leader of the party and also to have her define what Dutch culture is and this room filled with members of this elitist political party, people who generally speaking have university degrees and good jobs, don't see any problem with it. They think that this is completely normal. No criminal investigation of her and her husband required. This is a very strange group of quasi-educated people. But the entire society can't be like that, right? Because there are probably certain institutes in the Netherlands that are focused on things like morality, learning from history, celebrating freedom and actually having a sense of historical awareness. For example, every year there is a lecture taking place named after Abel Herzberg, a Jewish lawyer and writer who lived between 1893 and 1989, a man who survived both world wars. So of course the yearly Abel Herzberg lecture must address the horrors of Jew hatred. Such an important yearly event that zooms in on important moral themes must have some people in Involved, who actually should be the people from whom you'd expect that they would speak out against Mrs. Alcock using Dutch taxpayers' money to finance terrorist activities against the only Jewish nation state that exists in the entire world. I mean, seriously, right? So let's listen to a part of the very sophisticated Abel Herzberg lecture of the year 2018. Spreken uh, silver. Hey, wait. Zwijgen. Is goud, maar niet als het om universele waarden gaat. Niet als het gaat om positie te nemen tegen antisemitisme, tegen xenofobie, tegen racisme. We kunnen en moeten grotesk en grote ideeën met feiten en idealen bevechten. So someone who has been deeply involved with one of the greatest Jew haters of the previous few decades, who is also the father of modern day terrorism, is invited by an institute named after a Jew who survived World War II to lecture a room filled with snobs about the horrors of Jew hatred.
How does that make sense? This is like having an arsonist lecture a room about how dangerous fire is. Well, but perhaps there are other important institutes in Dutch society filled with very smart people who have been paying attention and who are very concerned about the infiltration of al qaq into our political system. Perhaps the University of Maastricht. I mean the University of Maastricht is a good university, so they must be very aware of the connection between our Minister of Foreign Trade and Development and the PLO, because the university people are the intelligentsia, right? For example, they have a yearly Dies Natalis lecture, and Dies Natalis is Latin for a birthday. So the birthday of this important institute of education and intellect, where the brightest minds in society meet in order to identify problems such as the murder of Israeli teenagers and things like that. So let's listen to the 43rd Dies Natalis Lecture of Maastricht University 2019. Of what we stood for and what we wanted to share with others. So we are citizens of this globe and we are certainly striving to always be global citizens. Thank you. A room filled with academics, professors who even teach to students, and none of them saw any problem. What kind of university is this? But perhaps there still is the media establishment, which includes journalism. The purpose of journalism is to ask critical questions and to expose problems that exist by engaging in truth-seeking in an objective, neutral and honest manner. A large part of the Dutch journalism establishment even received tax money for for exactly this purpose. So because journalists are the protective layer that exists between the government and the people, whenever a government attempts to for example hide corruption or create legislation that takes away freedom from the people, the journalists should be the ones to ask critical questions and expose the truth. So whenever some woman who has her personal life deeply entangled with one of the most hardcore terrorist organizations that have existed during the previous couple of decades, Decades. It should not be the responsibility of some writer slash YouTube figure to ask critical questions, but it should be the responsibility of journalists to ask critical questions. Questions such as, did Sigrid al kak know that Arafat compared the Oslo Accords to the Hujibiya Agreement and called for violence against Israel while fooling the Western world that he wanted peace? Who is Anis al kak really? What did he know? These are questions that the journalism establishment should ask. But what has the Dutch journalism establishment done during the last couple of years? Well, produce very positive articles about Sigrid al kak in which she is depicted as very progressive and very wise and very good for humanity and all of that. And the Dutch Public Broadcasting Foundation, which is a tax-funded organization, even created an entire show in which they celebrated how amazing Sigrid al kak is, paid for with Dutch taxpayers' money. Number of critical questions asked? Zero. So no, also the media establishment isn't working properly because they have turned against the people. And al also turned against the people. She even turned against the people before it was cool to be turned against the people. So they think that she is amazing. The fact that there are evil forces in this world that seek to destroy Western civilization is not a surprise. These forces exist and come in many forms. The Muslim Brotherhood, an organization like the CCP that has enslaved the peoples of China and which is now expanding its influence. Activists from the United Nations who view migration as a human right and who come to the United Kingdom and to the Netherlands with ideological recommendations that are cleverly designed to continue the managed decline of our countries. People like Robin D'Angelo who spread the destructive ideology of critical race theory. People like George Soros and people like Sigrid al kak And if you're watching this from the United Kingdom, you of course know who Sadiq Khan is and you probably have learned who Humza Yusuf is. Sigrid al kak can be compared to these men. These type of people exist. So of course if you give these type of people power. They will use this power to destroy, weaken, sabotage from within Western civilization. This really shouldn't be a surprise. What is a surprise, or should be surprising, is that all of this is possible. 
Well, it is possible because the mechanisms that should be preventing this aren't working properly. Institutes in the area of morality aren't working properly. Universities, places that should be centers of intellect and truth seeking aren't working properly. The journalism establishment has turned against the people and isn't working properly. Those institutions that actually should be there to guard against infiltrators like al Kak are actually helping these infiltrators to infiltrate even more and to infiltrate even more effectively even covering up their crimes by not doing a proper analysis or by spreading lies and disinformation about those individuals that do ask critical questions and this is the underlying problem that infiltrators like al Kak unintentionally expose thanks for watching this second part about the infiltration of the dutch political system thanks for watching this video don't forget to subscribe and have a nice day